For me, Red Bull Hardline is the most difficult downhill track there is. World Cup downhill tracks, they, they don't scare you like Red Bull Hardline. The cannon blew my mind, I'm not even going to do it. <laughs> the step up is just huge. The infamous and iconic road gap. You almost forget how big stuff is. The course is like this animal attacking you the whole way down. <laughs> Part of the track. It's like he's dropping from space. Oh, he hits that tree! Son. It's like ice up there. It's crazy. Just happy to get down, really. Whoa. Let's have some beers because what's too scary? It really isn't that you're racing against the other guys. You really are competing against the course. All about coming here with the right mindset, just attacking from day one. Curlay's down a scorcher. What's the next split? Oh, he's extended. What keeps me coming back to Red Bull Hardline? Come Sunday and you're confident. This is Brian at his best. He's risking everything. Just as big jump to go, he sends it. Probably one of the best race runs of your life. He's done it! Hello and welcome to Red Bull Hardline here in the heart of North Wales in the incredible surroundings of the Dovey Valley. The world's best riders have assembled to take on what many consider the most progressive race in downhill mountain biking. And by the end of today's action, the fastest rider down will be awarded the coveted crown of Red Bull Hardline champion for 2019. Thousands of fans have flocked here to see this year's downhill season finale and we'll be bringing you all the action live today as it unfolds. Joining me is a woman that really needs no introduction. Six times world champion Rachel Atherton joins us. Rachel, thanks for being here. Good to see you taking that win in thanks, Fort William. Rob. I don't know how many that. How many times you've won in Fort William now? Yeah, I think that was number four. When, you, when you've won 39 <laughs> World Cups, they it was do a special all one. That was a good one. You yeah. love it there. Mm. And an injury since then, but recovery going well? Yeah, yeah, really good. And, you know, super motivated to get back on the bike after seeing the guys hit this track. So well, absolutely. And we're in for an incredible day sport today. It's the finals of Red Bull Hardline. It comes around once a year, you know what I mean? We've got yeah. so much to look forward to. Qualifying was great. It's uh, Yeah, it's going to be, you know, the, the final Red Bull Hardline. Line. It's the end of the, the season, you know, the, the final kind of showdown. The riders are really up for it. They kind of they step it up every year and seeing them hit that stuff, it's, it kind of blows your mind every year. It certainly the does. The race is going to be good. It really is, yeah. yeah. It's been a spectacular week, of course, leading up to this point. Practice was uh, as uh, incident packed as ever. John wow. O'Jones there. Big New crash. yoga move. Yeah, the salmon he's calling it. I mean, you know, joking aside, thankfully he walked away from that. Brendan Still giving him a. Uh, in. Brendan Fairclough giving him a nice yeah. soft landing. Yeah. Thanks, Brendan. But, you know... Impressive yeah. to see him walk away, though. Joel Anderson coming up a bit yeah. short. That was the Another end of his week. Crash. Was big slam for him. Again, walking away from it, you know, so impressive. And look at Gaetan Vijay, the young Frenchman there, taking it to the free riders. Huge flip, no-hander. And, you know, the riders, no one knows, most of them don't even know they can do this stuff and they're, they're pulling out of the bag kind of <laughs> getting Incredible. super excited when they see those lips they're just all flipping it yeah they can't help it yeah they, they can't, can't help it but things after practice get a, did get a little bit more serious yesterday we had qualified here's what happened Kate Edwards was one of the early riders down just put the yeah. front over the top of a berm losing it over there he'll be looking for redemption today I he think. will despite that Kate did make it to the bottom and has made it into today's finals Brendan Fairclough, uh, <laughs> perfect backflip. Look at that. Barely flip. lost any time in that qualifier with yeah, that. Yeah, to flip that in his run, yeah, in his race run, he's, you know, he's going for it. And the fastest man, the fastest qualifier was Bernard Kerr. Won here a couple of years ago. Super aggressive and really attacked that top section, which was amazing to see. He raced this track top to bottom, nearly three seconds his advantage. Actually over second place, G. Atherton. But uh, sub three minutes, that's how fast it is here. I yeah. mean, the track really running fast. A little bit of rain today, but not enough to do any damage. Yeah, definitely. It's probably the best conditions it's ever been for the Rebel Hardline. You know, the riders saying yesterday it was amazing, perfect conditions, and a little bit more rain today, so we'll see how they get on. We will, indeed. Well, this is a course that can only be ridden once a year. And a few weeks ago, last year's champion, G. Atherton, showed me down this mountain where we talked racing lines, winning margins, and facing 55-foot road gaps without your feet clipped. Let's take a look at this. It really doesn't get any more picture postcard than that. I don't think there's many mountain bike races that start with just, look at it, it's just beautiful, man. 
Yeah, it shows you how high we are when you can see just straight to the bottom. And last year, I'd say the worst conditions we've ever had here for Red Bull Hardline. It was unbelievable to me that you could still get down, the riders could still make sense of it, but it seemed to bring out the best in you, and we saw that massive, the biggest winning margin ever. Despite how hard it was, you attacked it more than ever, I would say. I think I did, and I think, you know, those previous years of being so close and then having it pulled out from under me <laughs> helped that, you know. Like, I was at the top, I was last man down, the weather was awful, the conditions were terrible, but, you know, I thought, right, it's now or never, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attack this. You have to attack this course like a racetrack. You're by far the most qualified man here to show us down. Where are we going next? I'm gonna take you down to the first key spot you can really start trying to make up some of that important time. Let's go and have a look. Where'd you go here then, G? If it's dry and a bit of grip to the course like this, you can literally pull off the end of this rock and gap down to this flat down here. It's easy not to notice it, but straight away you gap this and then, you know, you've easily made half a second on the other boys and, and that's time ticking straight away. And that's where you win the race. We're not even 30 seconds into the track yet and, you know, I would have said, that this wood would be the first technical section, but no, no, no. It's incredibly technical, even the entrance. Why is it so difficult? You know, you come in, the wood's a bit misty, there's water dripping off the trees, all the shiny roots are just there to trip you up. And all the while you're trying to ride this, in the back of your mind, you've got this enormous rock drop, the fastest part of the track, and then an enormous cannon out of the woods. And that's kind of taken a bit of your attention, so it's still quite hard to attack this. In classic hardline style, there's a very unique setup for it. Atherton pulling out so much time at the top of the track, incredible. So you come into this massive central section to the track. You made some serious time here last year. How did you do that? It's the natural bit of the course. It's the bit without the big gaps on, you know, it's the longest stretch. To take advantage of that, you know, you need to attack it, you need to commit to it. You're coming in, it's damp, it's rooty, your bike's moving underneath you, yet here you have to be within a few mil of each of these rocks or your pedals are gonna catch. If you can make tents on each turn and each section, you know, you really start building up a, a good time margin here. One bit that didn't go quite as well last year, though, was a little bit further down, and you got in a bit of a muddle. I think we need to relive that moment. He's hit the ground harder than anyone I can think of, and he always gets back up. Takes the line to the rider's right. Oh, and a little dab there. It was actually a bit further down here, wasn't it, where you start to get in, in a bit of bother? Yeah, like you say, this high line is almost out of the question with a bit of rain on it, just for the, the sheer fact that you can't get to it and you're not going to get out of it. And all the time you're coming towards this section, you're thinking, don't mess it up. And another, oh, and a big mistake now. Because you don't want to be hitting the road gap with feet unclipped. You're in the air for quite a long time. You can clip a foot back in then. But as long as you're prepared when you land, hit that right hander and G out around the turn. I mean, I've never walked to the end of that, actually. <laughs> it's so high off the ground, but it is. Look how high it is. It's enormous. It's a bloody big road gap. Yeah. There's no two ways about it. No, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> you know, from the start to here, there's literally been no let up. So by the time you get to this point, your arms are going, your breathing's heavy, starting to think, I'm getting there, I'm within sight, and it's easy to start getting into that backing off mode, that Look mentality. Finish line here. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> what was it like when you crossed the line, looked back and saw green for the first time in, in the history of you riding it? As soon as I landed off that finish jump, I could hear the crowd going wild, you know, that that energy from all those people watching, making that noise, I could tell that I was onto a good one and a massive moment. You landed there, you came down to arguably this exact spot here where the finish line was a year ago. Now does it compare to winning world championships and British titles? You've won everything, man, you know? It was up there, to be fair, it was on par with it. It had been so long in the making, you know, I'd built it up in my head, I wanted to win it. I tried and tried and failed and tried again. So to suddenly have done it, it was incredible. It's been incredible to walk down there and see this track through your eyes. It really is where champions are made. And good luck in this year's hardline, mate. Cheers, Rob. Thanks, man. Well, great to hear from the big man himself regarding that winning run last year. Who actually is more nervous today, you or J? <laughs> yeah, I think it's probably right. I think it's me. <laughs> well, it's now time to see all that theory put into practice as G puts his bike through its paces with Charlie Hatton in pop pursuit. From the top to the bottom of this track, showing us the course from a very different rider's perspective. OK, we're at the start. Bit more of a chilled start from last year. 
straight away into a pretty gnarly rock drop. First berm, and a kicker out. Ooh, she's pretty big at the rock store. See the water kicking up already. Oh, good God, that camber. Probably the scariest part of the track for me. See the woods, it's so wet and dark, so slippery. And then this drop, oh my God, what's it gonna be? Oh, that worked okay. That is gnarly. Little pause there. And then straight away into this. High speed, super fast. Big step down. Speed tuck round. Oh God. Oh, big flip. Probably shouldn't have done that. It worked all right though. Into this steep, steep awkward tech section. It's actually drying out nicely. You see the berms are really pretty hard packed. These rock bits are just so awkward to get over. The berms hold you nice, you can attack. You can really start making up some time on the riders because there's no obstacles, nothing but raw, rough downhill into this tech. Oh, I hate that bit. Step down. And a big step down. Hard berm here. And this bit's brand new. Oh, he's big. That was huge. Brand new. Bit of track. Nothing really too gnarly, but God, it sends you up. Oh, that's huge. These hips are so much fun to ride. Little hip, step over the wall, she's blind. But a lot of fun. Again, another part of the track. Well, probably the only part of the track. You kind of chill on a bit. Before you hit these hard berms. Oh, they're so much fun. Holds you so well. And then this bit, the rock garden. Definitely the most awkward part of the track. Kind of a trial section that you have to get absolutely perfect because you know the road gap. Woo! That thing, that does not get any easier. Straight away, up over the rocks. Oh, and the stump there and into the rock chute. Really quite a technical part of the track and a big flat drop. Got to take the hits there, but with the changes the riders make to the bikes, these hits are uh, pretty chill to ride, really. Hold speed here because straight away you're into the big cannon. Oh, new steep landing there. Gives it a bit better run out and a bit more speed for the big gap to finish. And there it is. Oh, we survived. <laughs> Oh, good God. Wow. Well, absolutely mesmerizing to see that, that was bike. so cool, it's yeah. It's unbelievable. Is G going to do a backflip today? I, I don't think he is, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, he's on for the win today, so. All business. Yeah, all business. And, you know, that was taken a few days ago there. It's uh, incredibly dry there. It's a bit different today. It's, uh, it's really slippery there, so. Yeah, yeah, it looks perfect there. You know, the riders were saying it's the best conditions, but it is, you know, the weather's come in, it's a bit slippery, and they're saying it's pretty lethal, so. As a rider, what does that do to you, you know, as you're coming up to this finals run today? How do you deal with that? Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you kind of haven't got a choice, you know. You, the racetrack's the racetrack, and you kind of just have to get on with it. And that's a sign of a good racer, you know. You deal with what's in front of you, you adapt to it, and that experience that these World Cup racers, the older guys have, will come into play today. Yeah, absolutely well. Yeah. Finals are coming up. It's going to be a real race. Absolutely looking forward to this one. Can't the riders wait. are getting up towards the top now. And... Uh, Shortly, we'll be getting up to the top of the mountain. Where, you know, it's, it's tense times up there for all these riders, isn't it, now? It's about, a, it's almost upon us. Hardline's about to get going. Yeah, it's serious business now. Bit of fog up there as well, but that's part of it, Hardline. I mean, we always see these difficult conditions here. It's definitely a part of this race. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the Rebel Hardline always delivers with the weather. It's, it, it gives the riders a hard track, and the weather just adds to that kind of, that difficulty level. And I think they like it, you know. It's, it's definitely harder in the wet, but it makes them, it makes for an exciting race for us watching. And, 
you know, you could argue that that's the most important thing. Fastest qualifiers, G. Atherton and, and Bernard. Bernard, fastest qualifier. G won yeah. last year, though, when it was wet. It was not It was a lot, lot worse than it is today, we must point that out, but by six seconds. Do, these, do you think these conditions mm. favour G more? Yeah, I mean, they definitely... Bernard is the super cross rider out of the two. <laughs> he likes it bone dry. It was bone dry when he won here in yeah, 2016. True. Well, I think, you know, G definitely likes it in the, in, the, in the damp conditions. He likes that mud. But, you know, all the Brits are really good in the mud and they're yeah. good in the wet. So I think it's going to be a tight battle up there. It certainly is, yeah. Yeah, loads. It's they're both be really fired good. up for it either way. Yeah, I think they are. They there, all are. There's, there's some big gaps up there. Bernard's got the benefit of going last today. He'll be able to look and see whether, yeah. what G does in front of him at the very top as well. We know that. But, yeah, it's going to be really good. Some tactics going on there, sort of. If he does it, I'll do it. Well, if you just joined us, welcome to Red Bull Hardline 2019 here in the Dovey Valley in Snowdonia National Park. We've got the 14 finalists now at the top. Let's have a look and see then who's coming up today. The first rider we're going to see is going to be Harry Malloy. Cade Edwards, a former junior world champion after him. Gaetan Vijay, man of a big backflip <laughs> earlier in the week. Big flip, no hander off Gaetan, which most of the riders were surprised. He, they didn't know he could do it. No, so. well, I didn't. Yeah, maybe he didn't sick. either. Maybe he didn't mean to take his hands Apparently, off. Apparently, Brendan said he learned them a few weeks ago. He did that right? Yeah, especially for this. Tell. Alexandra Fayol, a former World Cup winner. Brendan Fairclough. I don't know if we'll see him do another backflip as he did in that qualifier. And then there's your last four riders at the top of the mountain: Joe Smith, Charlie Hatton, last year's winner; G. Atherton, and a previous winner there as well from 2016, Bernard Kerr all going for the uh, hardline title. Yeah, the Brits kind of ruling the... And that says a lot about, you know, how good the Brits are in those kind of t technical wet tracks. OK, well, let's go to the top now, then, where our first rider is waiting for us. And it is Harry Malloy. Misty mountain top. Visibility it's... not too bad up there, though, Rach. Yeah, not as bad as we thought. And... Cheers, boys. All the best. <laughs> it's first, oh, baby. first hardline race, so he's, he's pretty nervous, I think. 28 years old from Tunbridge Wells down in Kent and look at the difference out of the gate. Mud picking up immediately. Totally different ball game to yesterday. But First rider on track as well, so that's got to be a nerve wracking thing to kind of, you're clearing the track for the other riders almost. Yeah. yeah. You know, in these wet conditions, the first, the first wheels in the ruts make a big difference. That's right. The, the bit of rain that's come down since they finished practice make it just that topsoil a little bit more slimy. It should improve as riders come yeah. down. Think. Yeah, I think so. As it cuts up, you know, they're saying as the ruts develop, you, you, you want the more riders on it, the better. So, you know, for Bernard, it's going to be perfect. Yeah, right absolutely. Up. So here he comes. You can hardly see the cannon at the moment. Right the nice. That jump, one of the most fierce of on the track. 55 feet, huge step down in this huge step up. Nice. Malloy judging it perfectly. And his mum and dad are at the bottom, and you know they're they're kind of on tenterhooks waiting for him to hit all these big stuff. So. And this part of the track now, which we saw, you know, massive dents being made in the clock yesterday. This huge feature in oh. the middle, Malloy making a mistake. Yeah, and you can see how technical it is. You know, it's so much, so much on the track there. The riders are really pin pinpointing it, picking their way through yeah. those rocks. And they're saying it's getting harder and harder to ride the rocks with all this wet mud on on top of them. But if you can push it here today, and you can get away with it. Well, it might be the part of the track where the race is won or lost. But he's going to set the fastest time so far. First rider on track. So. This man started riding at Penzurst off-road centre. Poor, because it's known when he was five years old. It is a bike park. It couldn't really be further detached from uh, the track here at Red Bull Hardline. He's looking comfortable on the jump, so. Minute 33, then through that split. And there's that new, huge hip with thousands huge. and thousands of tons of dirt to... Uh, I don't even know where you got all that dirt from to build that land. <laughs> the dig crew were bringing it up in their pockets, I think. <laughs> and these jumps, are, oh. these, these jumps are big, but they're, they're really technical as well, you know, yeah. so the riders are really kind of... They're, they're forcing themselves, and each lip is different, and it's, it's really challenging for the riders to do the jumps, not just the size, but the technicality of them. You do get sent a little bit funny out of them. I mean, these riders are all used to those jumps by now. But um, it does catch him out, those compression in yeah. the bottom there. Yeah, big G outs. And, um, but, you know, they've had a, a nice dry day yesterday, and now it's, it's damp up there. So. This part of the track, we saw G getting a real pickle here last year in his finals winning run. It, you Clean know, through there, though. It's a lot Harry. better than it was last year. Look at that. that Still some grip there. So good. Malloy safely through that and safely across that absolutely ridiculous road gap. 
55 feet down, diagonally nearly 20 metres across that thing. And he's, you know, you can see that he knows how to, he's a racer through and through, he's putting his, he's putting his wheels exactly where they need to be, and that's what's important when it's damp and, and treacherous like this. Yeah. So you don't make a tiny mistake and that's going to throw you off into the trees. And it looks to me like bits of the track still, you know, relatively dry. The rock's definitely going to be slippery where that moisture's got on them. But again, it doesn't make your life any easier, does it? Not yeah. knowing where there's grip and oh, where there isn't. Little, little slip off. there. Is he going to have enough speed? Oh, yeah. easily. Almost perfectly lands into the start of this big finish straight then. A massive 65 feet, 70 feet jump. Malloy sets the benchmark at a 3.15 then. Oh, he'll be glad to have that run over and done with, I think. But that last, that finish line jump, well over 20 metres in length. Insane. Huge. It's absolutely massive. Spinning the pedals in the air over the step up. It's so impressive to see these riders, you know, hitting these huge jumps after all this technicals, all the technical sections that, you know, you can't really see the trees and the grass in the way and you can't see just how hard it is up there. No, and, and that part of the track's so steep as well. It really yeah. is exposed. Beautiful shot of Malloy, though, over that new hit. That was perfect. And the rider's saying, Mike's not a lot you can hard. do on that. You can't scrub yeah. it, you can't do anything. You just, it's a rocket. To yeah, move. they're just boosting and going with it, really. So Malloy, the first rider, safely down and across the line here at Hardline. And you can see that beautiful Dubby Valley below us. A lot of riders there at the uh, oh, yeah. dirty fern section. And the finish, actually, all the way down by, down there where those cars are. Mm. Yeah, there's loads of people here watching. And they're all going, you know, it's such a cool thing to watch Red Bull Hardline. It's, and that's what it's about. It's about the riders enjoying themselves. And it's about the crowd having a good time. And that's exactly what's happening. Yeah, everyone yeah, loving it. All the it. riders thoroughly yeah, enjoying like. themselves this week. Commentators are loving it. Cade Edwards will be the next rider to tackle the track once they can sort his GoPro out there. So I think pretty much all, all the riders are have, wearing the GoPros, I think, so there's going to be some pretty cool footage kicking around at the end of today. Okay. Absolutely, yeah, there will be. You know, getting on board with the riders as they go down one of the hardest racetracks in the world. Maybe seeing a... So, Cade Edwards, looks like he's in the zone for this one. <laughs> right, get it, Kurt. A little crash yesterday put him you know, down the list in qualifying, so... Get it, boys. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't want to hang around there too long once the helmet's on. Cade Edwards on track then. Junior world champion from 2018, this man and one. Without a doubt of the biggest talents on two wheels across all genres of mountain bike. And he can do what he wants on any bike, this man. High line across there. The front wash it and he oh, held oh, on oh. to it. Brave. He, he's, the thing with Cade, he can do it all. He's a, he's a very good bike rider. He's got the skill to race and he's got the talent for the big tricks and stuff. And he is a madman. He is a madman. What do you think about his line across that first rocky camera? Are we going to see a lot of riders doing yeah, that? Yeah, I it think we will. Like it nearly ended in tears. Rider! It's Malloy's 38 rider seconds. Kane yeah. Edwards goes over two and a half seconds into the green there. That's the big one. We expect to see plenty of style from this man. And the thing about Cade is that he, you know, he loves the tricks and the big jumps, but when it, he loves racing, you know, when it comes yeah. to racing, he's pretty, he's pretty into it. You know, you don't become junior world champ without being serious about oh, it. And he goes oh, down, no. and that is a horrible drop there. You can't see it Come on, on camera, Cade. but it is it's so huge. Hot. Yeah, it's huge. A it's technical got... landing. And a, and a technical kind of takeoff. The rocks are all a bit angled there. It's really far from straightforward. Oh, so Edwards, his well, peaks he... covered his eyes a bit there, so he's. And the next turn actually is where he crashed yesterday. So a crash in that qualifier and this final for him. Oh, poor Cade, you know, he's he, he, he's keen for racing. He wants to do good results. And that's why he's, he's still racing, not just doing the free ride events, you know, that yeah, people say, what's do. he going to do? And do well at. Yeah, but he loves racing and that's what he, he makes him tick. Well, I, I believe that, you know, he wants to prove that it's possibly a top down hiller and a top free rider. There's a possibility Slight you'll trick rider. this now after that crash. And still only three seconds back at split number two there. So, Edward's definitely on good pace. Tenth here a year ago. Oh, nice. slams that berm there. Yeah. Beautiful. And, you know, you don't know what's going to happen to the other guys, so you, you, you may as well carry on and, uh, and, and go for a, a good run. You know, everyone might have some crashes or some mechanicals. And, well, enjoy watching him ride. Turning it on for us now when the wheels leave the ground, Edwards. And actually, I remember when we were teammates, you know, when he was he was too young to ride this event, and he was chomping at the bit. He was like, let, let me ride, let me ride. He's wanted to do the Red Bull Hardline for years yeah. since he was a kid, so he's absolutely loving it. Still only 19 years old, this fella. 
And it, oh, well, that's how quickly it can go wrong. And talking to the riders before they went back up, they were saying that the rocks mm. are so, so slippery. I yeah. mean, that's the trouble. The dab's got on those. Lethal, you know, the, the mud's pulled onto the rocks. And um, it's interesting because you have to set your bike up to be able to do those big jumps and hit those big features. But you've got all the technical, the roots, the rocks in between, but you can't go too low on the pressures because you've got to still make the jumps. No, because you, that's right, because you want it. You want the suspension really active and yeah. quite soft, don't you, really, for this for a track like this with all those rocks yeah, and exactly. tree roots. But that just won't work on the face of the jumps and the landing. Yeah, and the tyres need to be hard so they don't roll off the lips and yeah. sort of kick you funny. Is that right? And we're not seeing many riders on spikes here today. Everyone's staying there. Yeah. Starting big scrub out there. That'll keep the crowd happy for Edwards, but Spike's not the go. Oh, yeah. no, 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 no. Nice. A suicide across <laughs> there along that 1.8 back only at the finish line. Well, wow, spectacular run as we expected from Cade Edwards. Attacking right out the gate. And this is it, Rach, where it went wrong. Yeah, just. Just a bit too much speed, I think, yeah. you know. He, he kind of went a bit hot into it, and it is such a hard technical drop that you... And then a super tight, big compression in that turn right after it, so maybe you need to check up a little bit before you launch it. But that, even that, is so technical. The yeah. Not so much the drop, but getting in line, the, the run-up to the top yeah, of that drop. Yeah, super technical, with rocks everywhere. And you just, oh, look at that. And, and the riders are saying, you know, the, the more the track churns up, the, the easier it'll get, almost, so... Yeah, it's tricky right now. These riders are going to be pushing for the win this afternoon. You're going to see a lot of mistakes, I think. Yeah, I think so. It's the nature of the beast here. Copy that, thank you. So 12 riders left to go then at this 2019 Red Bull Hardline yeah, Finals. Yeah. And the, the wind win. is getting up at the top now. So Flo Paye will be glad to be getting out of there. The tallest man in the competition. <laughs> Lives in the Reunion Islands, in uh, just off Madagascar. Moving actually back to France, to the homeland. But looking good at the top here at the moment. Hard to see, and takes that high line yeah. across the rocks. I think it's, you know, it might be safer, because if you, when it's wet, if you set up for the high line and you slide, you're only going to slide into the into the track. That is an optimistic racing way of looking at yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you slide, you're still on track. you still got somewhere to go. Yeah. He said yesterday was the best day he's ever had at the Red Bull High Line. And he's been a bit poorly all week, but he's up and over a yeah, second there the first flip. Paye, a former bronze medalist in the Downhill World Championships. I'm just tagging that section, that, that landing of the jump, but oh, the section he's in now is so is slippery. probably one of the hardest sections on the track, and you just don't see it. You know, no. littered with rocks and straight into this big drop. Well, look, Paye absolutely battling, oh, manages oh, to get around nice. there. We just saw Cade Edwards go down, but he's showing us, and he, and he holds that high line above a stump there. Oh, and you can see good. how physical it is, you know, really having to work every corner to stay stay on the bike. And then um, this track's, you know, nearly three minutes and it's much more physical than a World Cup track, they're yeah. saying. And that just goes to show how hard it is because it is so much shorter than the World Cup, but they're absolutely knackered. And it's in today really, really technical. Yeah. You can see the bike fighting him all the way down there. Still managed to huck off that, uh, off that and clear that route, that three stump there. 4.2 into the green end for Flo Paye now. <laughs> Just up on there, I'd say. Yeah, big new hip, and they've all had a lot of fun, but this is serious business now, so they're straight jumping it, but I think more of them would feel comfortable doing tricks on these jumps, I think. Oh, maybe a little bit short on the top of there, big hit. Didn't seem to lose him any uh, speed. And Paye now coming down towards that huge road gap, a few... Are they relaxed in these turns before race? Yeah, probably not in the finals, yeah right? I mean, they're probably not relaxed. You know, final race run, it's, it's kind of probably the last place you're going to have maybe a bit of a breather before into that gnarly lower section. Um, but riders saying that off the road gap is where you can have a breather. Stays over to the riders nice. left down there. That was super clean. Yeah, very clean, <laughs> steady. Safe. But he's through there safely, feet up. No scrabbling for pedals as he comes off the road gap then. Apparently the easiest feature on the course, so... Even though you can park <laughs> two uh, double-decker buses under it, it is absolutely terrifying. Oh. And a slip there. It's the riders getting, getting caught out yeah. everywhere, Rach. And the, the, there is nowhere on this track that you really can take your eye off the ball. And, and that's interesting because it's, su it's such a demanding course mentally, you know, they're really on it all the way down. 
Yeah, there is really nowhere to relax. The mud on the tyres green again, and, and the last split for Paye. But the mud on the tyres, especially on the slower parts, really seem to uh, play havoc, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, your tyres are getting clogged up, maybe. Yeah, it's been enough of it. So Paye, it's been a good run. No real mistakes from him, and he is going to go fastest. 3.12.5 now the time to beat. Fastest qualifier yesterday by Bernard Kerr at 2.50. Shows you just how much more difficult things are today. That inside is, is uh, I reckon it's pretty grippy on those rocks. I'm going to say it. I reckon it's absolutely fine. Don't. Yeah. You put it out there, right? Pretty dry, I think. If G's at the top, you can get to yeah. You can speak to him now, you tell him to go for it. And you can see just, he's so relaxed. He's loose, his bike's going all over the place underneath him, and that's what you need to be, let the bike do its thing and just stay on. Correcting it. In the air there as well, he could see he was coming up a little bit short. Well, Gaetan Vige now from France, former French national champion, this young man. And as keen as everyone else to get on track here. Doesn't look like the weather's getting any better at the top. Riding for Cube Global, turns that step down. And where's he going to go on this uh, first <laughs> rock camber? Down to the berm. That looked fast to me. Safe line, I think. Safe. Yeah. Straight and there's down. much more in these first woods than you than it looks. You know, a couple of corners, but really technical. Lots to catch you out, loads of roots. And they're pedaling, you know, the more speed you can carry through this mud, the easier it is. Yeah. The speed helps you when it's wet, I think. In fact, I know. You know, and he's up. Wow, look at this. Doesn't look to me like that inside yeah. line's working across the rocks at to the top. No Goes way. Awesome, no Gaetan, and no one knowing that he could do flips until he came to the Rebel Hardline. So Gaetan Vijay with his World Cup handcuffs <laughs> off, doing what he wants here. And he's Come safely around that turn that we've seen the others struggle with. That was sick. And he's riding well here. Really fast through yeah. there as well for Vijay. He's really attacking considering the conditions, you know, so we know it's possible to push, push on in these wet conditions. Second overall the Junior World Cup downhill in uh, 2016, so the man does have some race form. And he has got a moustache that would rival yours, Rob, I think. Which, of course, makes him extremely cool. Yeah. And he's over nearly eight seconds up then. So Vijay, if he can keep this going, and he goes massive yes, over the hip. Gaetan, and he slid out on this hip in practice this morning. Just both wheels slid on that landing. You know, and that's the thing about the Red Bull Hardline course, it's, it's not safe, you know, it's, it's wide open, the riders can really make use of the track how they want, so really interesting. Yeah. Well, more and more riders really attacking it. Vijay, the best we've seen so far today. Eight here a year ago. Hauling through this flat section. No, actually, from uh, qualifying yesterday, where we saw Brendan Faircup backflip that big step up. Ron is only losing a real 0.4 of a second. So that's it now, the bar is set. We're going to see them in the World Cup. And again, oh, come on, Gaetan, stay on. There. He actually came over to the riders right there. It's a more he's direct still, line with a much more difficult exit. Nearly caught him out. He's still not got his feet on, Rach. Oh, no. Oh, my face. Dude. Yeah. Oh, he's all good across the road gap. And that is where that experience of World Cup racing is coming in. Continue regardless. <laughs> well, there is a point of no return on that. Um, yeah. On that huge wooden boardwalk that takes you out to the edge there. This is a really good run. Really solid. Absolutely. Well, it's impressive because he's attacking, attacking so hard. Attacking everywhere, yeah. really. This is a full race run from Vijay, and he's over eight seconds up. Wow. And that's Bloke Paye we're talking about. You know, one of the big stars on the World Cup circuit. So, so this is electric this from Vijay. Oh. He's been off quite a long way down here, of course. He came up short and just Come didn't on, finish Gaetan. like that last year and nearly went over the handlebars. Yes. It's much cleaner today, so Vijay lifts the bar at hard line. 6.7 up, 3.05, now the time to beat. That was impressive. Big run from the young Frenchman. Wow, first flip in the Red Bull hard line. Look at it. Probably going to see a few of those now. I don't a fair know. bit of pride on... No, I don't know. Actually, there's only a few probably can pull yeah. that. I think he's going to be uh, on his own up there on the trick podium. And handling that well yeah. there, you know, we know how slippery it is out. And again, high above that tree stump there. And really the first to carry good speed across that camber. Yeah, not didn't drop down low to the rut. 
you know, we saw G here last year make a similar mistake and, and go on to take the win. So yeah. actually riding wild like this doesn't seem to affect them much. Well, I think it's probably fair to say that, you know, this track compared to most most World Cup tracks, because it's so technically difficult and arduous top to bottom, you, you can afford mm. the odd mistake. I mean, yeah, you can. Yeah. you're not going to have a perfect run on it, are you? Yeah, that's well, exactly it. The, the less technical the track, the closer the times and the, the less mistakes you can make. Chaos Seagrave about to drop yeah, in okay, then. Man. Just down the road, lives about an hour away, 20 years old. Third time at Red Bull Hardline for this talented young man. And he's riding with no gloves, even in the wet, which is, uh, you know, that's, that's his sort of, that's and his he's trademark. On that high line. Whoa! Oh. And that got a bit messy there, I'd say. Yeah, but that's what Chaos needs, I think, for those race runs. He needs to be on the edge a bit more. He's such a talented rider, you know, he's so, he's such a good bike rider, but the race runs just seem to get away from him. So if you're looking to do something here at Rebel Hardline, really kind of, he wants to get on that podium and, you know, he deserves to, if you ask me. Well, he's absolutely capable of it. That is for sure, like you say, mad skills. Yeah, just one and a half back then. That's the first flip. Wow. We spoke too soon. <laughs> oh, and he's oh, down no. just like that at the top. Yeah. He's not, oh, not going to summon out him in. before he uh, slides down that. Well, he's got down there one way or another. Well, he flipped it. Someone get that man a rope. At least he didn't go down the waterfall. <laughs> oh, that would have been a lot worse, but that is how slippery it is up there. And that's what we're saying, you know, you flip it, he landed in the sweet spot, and I bet he carried so much speed into that next yeah. section, whereas if you case it and you tag it, slow, the, you know, scrub the speed, it probably helps into that t really gnarly section. Yeah. So he probably just couldn't slow down enough, I think. And also, I'd imagine, I've never actually done a backflip, but you yeah. must feel like for a split second afterwards, like, yay, a I just that went well, and yeah. then, ah, boom. You, I you bet he was just buzzing for that, yeah, that split it's second. It's a bit distracting, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But slowly piecing his bike back together. Not surprised it took a big knock off the cliff. It just dropped off. <laughs> yeah. His dad will be livid at the bottom. He will. Livid. Let's have a look. He just comes over the top. Oh, Probably yeah. a bit fast. Yeah, and there's so many rocks there, you know, you can't really see, but there's so much to catch you out. It was so steep as well, you know, the way that he was sliding over the edge yeah, there. Yeah, really steep. So steep. Just drying his hands before he gets back on his bike. Yeah, paying the price with wearing no gloves. No gloves, no love in this <laughs> weather. I think he said that went well. <laughs> <laughs> Did he? Yeah. That went well. Right, he's, he's not at the bottom yet. Yeah, exactly. Here he's still got... <laughs> really hard, hucks it, oh, makes yeah. it around the turn. And it's so distracting once you have a crash in that race run, you know, you, you've got to really clear your Whoa. mind and... Oh, oh, and look how slick it is, yeah. right? That, those feelings like that when you're on a bike and two wheels start drifting under you. <laughs> and there's very little you can do about there's it. very but... little you can do. And it would probably help if we had more rain up there, you know? It would probably make it a bit grippier. This track, you started this track here, what, 15 years ago? It's, it... wow. it's been heavily modified since then. Yeah, the yeah. natural version, though, but how slippery is that rock? I mean, when it's wet. Big one foot, a massive, oh, huge over there. Both feet blown off the pedals on landing. He's going to be feeling yeah. that. Chaos probably just looking to have a bit of fun here. Yeah. No oh, way. Oh, oh, my goodness. No way, Chaos. Oh, flips. I've never seen oh, that track. No. It's such a hip, and he flipped it. What? Oh, my God. That is crazy hard. Crazy tech to do that. What a madman. And he's still on his feet, thankfully. Yeah, he pretty much rode it out. What a madman. That was cool. He's going to get some speed up in a second. I'm glad we're not missing this, I will say that. That was... Yeah. I mean, that is a tech jump with, yeah. with a straight it's, air, it's, it? Yeah, it's really technical. You know, the riders are carving off the net. You really pull it across. And we've seen in previous years, some of the riders landed in that tree behind Chaos there. Yeah. So that just shows you how much of a hip that it is. That tree has had a lot of love over the years, hasn't yeah. it? I think it was Gaetan Vijay last yeah. year who was absolutely Koala bear for it. it. Yeah. That was Koala sick. Koala bear. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Chaos, don't do anything else. It's reminding you of Thomas Fearon's run in Wyndham and when he just crashed and crashed and crashed. And you were like, get off the bike. That was because he banged his head 
Yeah, yeah well, was, yeah. And he, he told me after, I said, what was going on? He said, uh, yeah, I took such a knock, like, yeah. I didn't really know what was going on. And, the, the, you know, it's been stepped up in, in the recent years, you know, a knock to the head, the riders are really kind of on it. And I think he's having a bit of trouble with his bike, um, yeah, not surprisingly. Yeah, well, the road gap's really not the sort of thing you want to tackle where potentially a wheel could lock up or something. There's not really an easy way down this track. No. Know, if your bars are twisted or... Getting a good look at the track there. It's got a... Looks like it's got a flat front tyre now. Which I'm probably... pretty sure. It'd probably be nice and grippy. It might be. <laughs> Just to stop... Mm, it's going to be interesting to see exactly where he got. Yeah, he needs to go left now, Chaos. Okay, go left. Yeah, that's I don't the, think he's not going for it. the chicken good, line. No, that's all right. We're all good. We're all good. He's not going for it, <laughs> no. That was a moment of relief. I wouldn't want to, even want to see anyone attack that with a... Um, the thing is, there's physically no <laughs> way down from the end. <laughs> no. Is he just going to throw the bike off the end? I don't know. No, no, he's all right. He's... They'll bring him down on, wow. a, uh, on a crowd surf, I think. <laughs> Well, we're watching Chaos Seagrave make his way to the bomb after a few crashes further up the course. Nine riders left after him here at the 2019 Red Bull Hardline in Snowdonia, North Wales. Two flips from Chaos we've seen so far. Yep, yeah, so far. <laughs> Punch, he's not got any air in his front tyre now, we think, so it's probably over for him. Great atmosphere at Red Bull Hardline as well. As ever. The fans, though, they're not disappointed, are they, on site here? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing else like it it's, yeah. in the world of mountain biking. Every every run, I'm like, wow. Yeah, it is, isn't <laughs> you know, it? Yeah, it's so exactly. impressive. Well, all going on so far. I mean, what we've seen so far really, yeah. Rach, is just Mind how blown. slippery the track is. The, the, especially yeah. the rocks. Some of it looks OK, but the damp bits are catching everyone out. Yeah, the, the bits you expect to be wet in the trees and the ruts, that's fine. It's the bits where it was super dry yesterday and, and the mud's kind of dragging onto those rocks yeah. and roots. They're really kind of struggling with it. Yeah, let's have a look at the current standings then from the riders we've had down so far. And it's Gaetan Vies that leads with that 3.05. I'm going to say that's a, that was a really big good time. It was such an aggressive run. That's yeah. what, 15 seconds slower than? Cade Edwards with that 3.17, still waiting for Chaos Seagrave to get to the bottom. Well, while we wait for that, let's have a look at our next rider. It's Matt Walker from New Zealand. After an 11th place at World Champs this year, I was, am feeling really good on the bike. We made some big changes with the setup, and um, hopefully that form rolls through this week and um, just get comfortable on the track quickly and we'll see how it goes. Back in 2015, I kind of, um, I came here with big intentions of, you know, giving it a good nudge and I actually got to the first jump, kind of misjudged the landing a little bit, landed off the side of the track and into some stumps and um, actually broke my thumb and needed surgery on it. Um, a lot of people look up to this event as like as gnarly as it gets when it comes to down and mountain biking. So pretty excited to be here. For me, like my attitude towards racing is you've got to enjoy it all while you're doing it. You can't just focus on results. I don't know, it'd be nice to get some wins under my belt at whatever racing I do, but um, as long as I'm enjoying it, like I consider that a win. So here's Matt Walker then at the top. What can he do today? From Kawua, Kawua, excuse me, in New Zealand. And coming in off an incredible 11th place at the World Championships in uh, downhill in Monsantan, where he basically sat in the hot seat all afternoon. Multi-talented rider, does a bit of enduro. Yeah, yeah, really turns his hand to anything. Pulls that high line across there, really high on it, actually, really straight as well. Oh, good. It's looking kind of dry under the This wet. is hard in here, though, Rach, mm, isn't it, before it is. they get to this rock drop? Yeah, there's so much to catch them out, and, you know, they're at the start of the run, and they don't want to just blow it straight away. Get at least one good jump in, you know, so... But, exactly, there's no warm-up on this track, but if you're going to win it, yeah. you know, we saw some fair time gap differences. Yeah, and it's well, 30 seconds to the yeah, first split. Walker, not doing much from there. Oh. Oh, four seconds back, breaking. <laughs> For the, uh, for the big step up, as we know the riders have to. That's what makes Gosh. it so difficult. Did he? Did he have a little brake check? It looked like. Is that yeah. what you thought it was? Yeah, I thought he ty his tyre had blown off. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, oh. And he had that brilliantly there. Had to get off the brakes. Really the working the bike. You know, hopping it round, getting getting straight so he can carry so he can carry himself straight over the rocks that yeah. are so slippery. Don't really want to be turning on this stuff. No, that's right. 
going to be squaring corners off as much as you can. Broke his thumb here in 2017. And he said, actually, yes. Oh, look how quickly it gets messy there. He said yesterday that he wanted to ride this stuff in between the jumps, you know, faster. Um, because there's so much in between the jumps. That's where it's won and lost, really. Beautiful there over that big hip. Could be bigger, that jump, I think, couldn't it? <laughs> well, it could, actually. Yeah, You're right. it could. You're going to have to move it back for next year. Take off, move the takeoff back. Style. That's what the jumps are built for. He's got a, uh, he's got a famous sister that races, uh, races Rach, silver yeah. medalist, doesn't she? The London yeah, BMX, BMX Olympics, racer. Sarah Walker. Impressive family, really. Yeah. Pulls in. Get inside that rock on the exit of that turn. And this part of the track looks as good as it's been all weekend, if not yeah, better than yesterday in looks qualifying. It's perfect, doesn't it? I think it says us, sat here nice and safe. And he comes over to the rider's right there. That was nice. Comes over that big rock at the end of that line. Gives him a much better um, entrance to that left hander. Yeah. And he nails that, I would say. Yeah, and I think a, a little bit slower into that rock section is actually better, rather than just going all, all out and kind of blowing up. Just over 11 seconds off Bernard Kerr's fastest qualifying time yesterday in that qualifying run. Ooh. A bit hesitant there. Got to be, though. Look at the size of that drop. Then you're not going to get two chances at it. The riders, you know, really, really interested in the uh, World Cup. You know, you warm up a lot. You're on the turbo train, the TRX, whatever it is. And then the Red Bull Hardline, they're just like, up straight in, no warm up. <laughs> yeah. You know, have no a can at the top in. either. Yeah. Oh. But it's been a good run for Walker. Yeah, pretty Remember solid. the time gaps are a lot bigger here. You can see him going to the top Huge three this time. That finish jump. He goes second. Nice. Four point four back then for Matt Walker. Very respectable. A great run down. Oh, I'll be stoked with that. Highline right at the top. And interesting that you don't see, you know, that much tape here on, on course. You know, some of the sections are taped, but that's right. the majority of it is kind of the riders can go where they want, and that's nice, you know. They're really making use of the track and kind of almost um, kind of finding their own way down. How much air time? There's 15 seconds in the air every run in. Is there? That's what they, they spend about 15 seconds with their wheels off the ground. Well, let's go down to uh, Rick, who is with Matt at the bottom. Matt, you're down. You're still smiling. How difficult are conditions up there at the minute? Um, it's real tough. Just out in the open, it's so slick on the rocks. Um, it's really hard to trust, but it is drying up quite a bit. I'd say it's going to get better and better through the day. Fingers crossed the weather stays like this. It's a little bit gusty up there, but it's a lot of fun once you get through this finish out. And what about visibility? Because just looking up the track, I mean, there's a big bank of cloud up there. Is it tough? Yeah, up uh, above the woods, you can't really see too much. It's just, uh, yeah, short visibility, but then you come out of the canyon and it's all clear, and you can see what you should be scared of. <laughs> Happy to be down in one piece. Absolutely over the moon to be down in one piece. That's all I wanted. <laughs> well, thanks very much. Well done this week. Thank you. Cheers. So, Matt Walker. I'm laughing because Rachel is videoing his face on the screen. Is he, you told me that he's now the, the yes, number man. one. Is that right? The number one hot male rider? He's, he's took the crown off. Oh, Greg Minard, let's go back to the top then. That's a discussion for another time. My boyfriend's and it's Braga down there. Vest eh? My boyfriend's down there. <laughs> Braga Vestavik on track. Braga going big at the top, first jump. And Braga he loves this track. You know, he's been to Hardline, you know, numerous times and he's absolutely loving it. Fourth time oh, out. Whoa. That was pretty wild. It's a bit wayward. But he's a Norwegian Viking, so he's got it covered. He is. This is the Viking. 95 kilograms, this man. He's huge. And he had a great run here last year in very similar conditions. It was actually worse last year, but he seemed to uh, really thrive. Cannon. And he's look at that, just point six back in the first split there. But that sixth place run last year, you know, finally yeah, he's got to terms with this Red Bull hardline track. And I think, you know, his weight will probably help him, you know, take him over those jumps, really help him dig in through the mud onto that dry lower la layer. And working out here, really active on the bike and riding oh, beautifully through perfect. there. Yeah, really nice. <laughs> Similar conditions up in Norway a lot of the year round as well. He won't mind the mud, the wet. It's just that that section there is so wild. And it's really re loose. And it was interesting to hear Matt Walker say that he thinks the track is drying this afternoon. Mm. He'll be dusty by Bernard's run. From Meissen, about an hour outside Oslo, this man. Norwegian national champion. 
Nice. And he's up by over a second then. So Vestavik on a run here. And he did squash that lip and still oh. went so big. Huge on that new hip. And the riders have been loving that new feature this year, you know, really excited to ride it. That's what it's all about, the excitement levels. Well, perfect. Yeah, I'm looking at him thinking he's racing here. He's not worrying too much, he's doing the jumps as quickly as he can. I think it is drying, you know, we've yeah. seen the first few riders took their feet off in those flat bits and now it's pretty good. Oh, picks up out of there, lucky to get off. Not case that back wheel on that rock. He said he did break his fingers whilst filming a few weeks ago. That's right, actually, months, yeah, it's his first run back. Which Seven is... weeks off the bike coming into this event. It's seen him well, I think. A great, really fast down there on the end of this big road gap then. That was probably the fastest we've seen that rock section, I think. The fastest, cleanest run. Best of it. Really uh, a full-time junior pro on the World Cup. Oh, that was fast. That was again, a lot of speed oh, around that rocky corner. Little bit of a hook up on the exit. He held it. Carrying speed, no problems for Vestavik then. Oh. His motto in life is Halt Rollig, which means totally calm. I can't imagine he's calm <laughs> at the moment. 5.2 up then. So it's a massive run from Vestavik. And it does look perhaps like the course is drying. So the later qualifiers are going to have the best of it this afternoon. So Vestavik is going to lift the bar here at hard line. He crosses the line sub three minutes. 5.95 up, the first sub three minute run this afternoon. I wasn't wow. sure we were going to see that. That's impressive. That was impressive. And 250, just... a fastest qualifier from Kerr. So, you know, not far off that now. So, it's, yeah, it's not slowing it down too much up there. So, just now seven Could riders have... left. That was wild. Dived into that into that high line, the route kicked him up and he just carried on trucking, you know, he knows where he wants to go, he's going, keeping that commitment going. And look at this, so nice through on that hard ride, right, line, excuse me, over to the rider's right. Hard line, just hard right. Just snuck through the, yeah, that through was, that, that second was right fast. hand, that, that yeah, was really. really fast. Probably not going to see that done much better than that no, this afternoon. So. Well, the next rider we're going to see at the top is Laurie Greenland. Yeah, yeah. Winning my first World Cup was crazy. Just knowing that all the hard work over the years and all the all the good times, all the bad times, all the bits in between, kind of all the sacrifice you make, that's why it all comes together and you you have this thing that you've been working towards for that long. It, it's a surreal feeling. When you kind of have a taste for success, you just you instantly know you can do it and it, it changes everything in your mind. Coming here and getting your heart going is like, yeah, it almost brings you back to that that like insane adrenaline rush of why why we kind of all got into it in the first place. So yeah, it's it's definitely an advantage coming back and just that being a little more mellow and but yeah for me it still gets my heart going. It's a scary track. So Laurie Greenland at the top then ready to drop in. A man who won a World Cup race this year. Cheers mate. The whole World Cup dominated really by two French riders with uh, this man and Danny Hart, the only other riders to win World Cup races in 2019. So Greenland, You can see can that mud kicking up straight away off the start. He said he wants to enjoy this run. He's going to go for it, a bit like he did last year. See how he feels, find his way into it. Drops to the berm here on the outside. Maybe he's, he's feeling a bit hesitant in this kind of damp conditions more than he was yesterday. He's going to see how it goes, and he's probably exhausted after that World Cup season. You know, he's probably at, it takes a lot out yeah. of you winning a World Cup, and you know he's probably ready for a ready for some fun. Right I think. Absolutely, he's going to surf in a right few right weeks' time. One point five back. That's the yeah, first split. Then. So in touch for Laurie Greenland. Huge, big whip over the step up, and now we might get an indication of what he's up to because if he's going to push, it'll be in this big open section. Carrying good speed in. And fast down there. Look how easy he made that look. And I think... Oh, ah! Cross there as well, getting a little oh, bit wide. Still unclipped. But he's quite a short rider, Laurie, so his bike will be quite short. And I think that 
on some of these sections and short bike will really help, you know, get diving into those tight corners, really kind of fit in between the rocks and the roots. That's going to help. Yeah. Whereas some of the longer bikes will really get caught up and yeah. you know, almost not make it around the turns. Threads the needle through two very narrow rocks there at the end of that straight. But he's outside the time of Vestavik by over three seconds. So Vestavik has done something big here this afternoon, I'm going to say. And that was something big from Laurie Greenland. And running wide on that landing because he, he went so big on the jump. Still only 22 years old, this man. Big dog leg over there as well. He's having a bit of fun, isn't he, Laurie? He's, he's enjoying this run, I think. He doesn't want to doesn't wanna scare himself, you know. It's, it's wet up there. It's been a long year. And yeah. It's not the same conditions as yesterday in qualifying. No, it's not. It's a lot, lot different. Greenland stringing one together. Absolutely loves this event here. And uh, we've got a... Mention, of course, Brooke MacDonald, his teammate who was supposed to be at this race, of course, had that nasty, horrendous accident in uh, Montserrat. And, yeah. uh, but he's, you know, healing Everyone's... vibes, Brooke. Everyone's uh, thinking of you, and we know that the recovery yeah. is going well. And uh, he's an inspiration to us all, Brooke MacDonald. Yeah, and the rider's been carrying around a cardboard cut out of Brooke all weekend, so he's here, he's he's had, here with them. He's had one of the best weekends of his life. Yeah, he just yeah. hasn't really been here to enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Greenland, Whoa. working on the hard, Pretty keeping clean it straight. Run. Yeah, it's a good, clean run. But Vestavik's time's gone by. 4.6 into the red then for Greenland. Man who won that World Cup in Val de Sole by nearly three seconds this year. Doing it for the, for the fans. Just the big, oh, nice. massive. 20 metre jump to finish. Greenland goes second, 4.4 back. And it's Braga Vestavik who leads here at Hardline at the moment. Good time from Laurie, considering that Gaytan's run was, you know, looked yes. really strong That's and right. fast. So Laurie was chilling, but that just shows the kind of the difference in, in level between those top World Cup riders yeah. and, and the rest of the field, you know, no disrespect. No, no disrespect at all, but it was incredible how quick and easy he made that big yeah. open section after the step up look. And, Big style on the big jumps as well from this man. You know, you don't see these riders do this at the World Cups, uh, these top World Cup races. And he's, riding, but he's riding flats there, I think, I saw. Just to make him even sicker. Will he race in flats? No, but he doesn't. He doesn't normally, no. No, he doesn't. Maybe he switched to flats that I haven't seen actually yet, Rach, but. Um, Maybe it isn't, but I think it was a. Who knows? Well, let's go down to Rick, who is with Laurie. Laurie down the bottom, happy with that one. Yeah, man, that was such good fun. It was, uh, yeah, just nice to hit some big jumps for a week. It's uh, not often I get to hit jumps that really get me back to that childhood kind of fearing about hitting a big jump. So, yeah, it's cool. We're racing against the people we normally race against and some free road people. So it's cool to ride with everyone, session with everyone. It's not like a, it's not that World Cup kind of intensity with your rivals. So just to break it up, get to ride with them and have a good week. And it's, it's the landmark for the end of the season. So yeah, it's dope. At the top of any racetrack is a high pressure scenario, but tell us what the atmosphere is like at the top of this one. Pretty, pretty scary actually, because there's loads of fog up there and you can see it was just, the fog was flying past the TP where we were all waiting. So it was pretty windy then, but yeah, in general it was real fun. And yeah, I'm stoked, stoked to be out alive. <laughs> Laurie, thanks very much. Well done this week. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Who wants some gloves? Well, a big smile on his face, Alexandra Fiol. Just six riders, half a dozen riders left now at the top. Yeah. 2019 yeah, Red Bull Hardline from a misty mountain top in Snowdonia. Did a good run yesterday, Fiol. He really, really did, yeah. Man who has won a World Cup in the past, and he sends that drop at the top. First rider we've seen That's today. That's it, and apparently no one did that in practice today either. So, Fayol, we know how brave this man is, how committed <laughs> he'll be. And he was going well yesterday. He was attacking where others were kind of chilling, feeling their way down. And he's he's been at pretty much every Rebel Hardline, I think. And uh, he's, a he's really impressive. I think he's the rider that's impressed me the most. Um, this year, yeah, you know, coming I back agree. year on year. That's right, and after a massive concussion here back in 2016, he yeah. was airlifted actually off the very next jump. Well, look at that, just 0.12 back, and even scrubbing off that cannon squashes that as well. So, Fayol on the move here. And that was a jump where he had that big crash, and you know, I'm one, yeah. you wonder if it plays his mind or if he's just 
you know, wipe the slate clean and he's moved on. Well, it looked like he hit it with confidence then. And fast out there. It, it does look like it is drying up, you know, it's looking... Every rider is oh. looking there. Whoa, right oh, yes. Wow. Damaging stone walls as he comes down. Getting wild, pedalling out of that turn. But right on the edge there, even getting up on those rocks. Heating up. So, and you can just see how much speed he's carrying out here in the open. This is Bernard's gap, where some of the riders are doing something on track there that, that, that gets them a couple of seconds. But Vestavik quicker in, the, in that part of the course. Just 1.3 into the red, though, only for Fayol. Won that World Cup at the start of 2017. Went on, actually, to finish that year. Tenth overall, proving that uh, first race was no fluke result. And perfectly over the waterfall's edge, the first jump there. Yeah, and it's, it's got to be hard for the riders to, to make the decision on, on the setup when it's this kind of... The conditions are so different from yesterday. You know, it's, it's, it's damper up there, it's really wet, and then... You know, you can't really afford to run soft tyres and soft suspension because the jumps are the same size. But you'd want to, right? For yeah, more you would, grip ideally, in these conditions, you would, yeah. yeah. So the rocks are catching them out because their tyres are so hard for the jumps. Yeah. If you run any less pressure and an outside dab there from Fayol, he gathers it back together, though. You know, didn't lose much forward momentum there. That didn't cost no. him a lot of time. No, that was pretty good. <laughs> Looked like to me he almost went off the end of that road gap, sat down there. <laughs> Riders getting more and more comfortable. Right, in the inside into this corner, with the other riders are setting up wide. So he did it pretty cleanly, though. So maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's you know riders how how the track suits you is what's important, not where everyone else is going. That's what's important to know. Absolutely, it's where you are comfortable going. That's what. Yeah, lines don't work for everyone, and still really close. So you know he's he's kept Raga Vestavik honest, really, from split one down. Inside again into this final corner. Can he pull back? Nearly just under a second and a half end on this run down to the line. It's going to be tight, I think. It's a lot of time to pull in such a short space. But he goes across the line second, just 0.68 back then for Alexandra Fayol. Vestavik holds on to the lead, though, with only five riders <laughs> now left at the top. And you can see a little bit of dirt on his on his tear offs. You know, he, he had tear offs on and he didn't he didn't pull any. We didn't see him take his hand off and pull a tear off. Not many spots you can, right? Not really. But no. the, the fog must get on the lens a bit up there, I yeah. would imagine. I think it's more of a backup, you know. Clipping this big rock here. Look at what they're riding. If you look oh, at the yeah. background oh. there, look at what they're riding wow. across. So his back wheel just got kicked on the edge of that kind of uh, fallen wall there. And he just. You know, it's so cool to see the riders make these mistakes. They get into these, you know, wild shapes and they just keep on going. Keep yeah. your eyes forward and just keep on trucking. What, yeah, top World Cup racing, races these days. I mean, it's just unbelievable, isn't it? As you well know yourself. And you know, Rob. <laughs> yeah, it's becoming a more and more distant memory, <laughs> race. I must admit. Yeah, same. <laughs> but yeah, it's absolutely incredible. So the weather looking like it's holding off for us. The track looks like it's getting faster. And the next rider to leave the top is going to be Brendan Fairclough, Scott Fa Factory Racing rider. I can't wait to see Brendan ride. I, I well, think he's one of my favourite riders. He's the he's the he's one of the big dogs, isn't he? Mm. Uh, the Bren dog. I mean, really back on form this year as well with a, an amazing sixth place in Leger, just off a World Cup podium again. Yeah, that was, that was a long time coming for him, you know. And he's going to Red Bull Rampage in a few weeks' time, so a man who really blurs that. the line. A free racer between racing and free riding. Fair Clough then, on track. Looking to, to prove a point this year, I think. You know, in previous years, oh, fast round oh. our first turn. That's the commitment we want to see, though. It was an aggressive start. He's hauling. Gets a bit sideways over the top of there, oh. down to the berm. Stood up a little bit in that corner. He almost carried too much speed into it. And it yeah, just he did, yeah. Stood him upright. What's that? What goes through your head when you make a mistake like that at the top of a run, right? Keep going, keep going. The temptation can be yeah. to try and make that time up, yeah. and that can lead to bigger problems. Yeah, if you go, if you're trying to overcompensate too much, Rider then... Rider Robert Cannon. Who's so yeah, probably gone faster if you hadn't made that little mistake. Yeah. But, but that's the first 30 seconds. That's right, and he's in touch, less than two tenths back, so this is definitely on for Fairclough. Yeah. And I think that case on that jump would have flustered him a little bit as well, you know. So he's he's going to be now trying to think, right, keep oh, it clean, God. make some time. Crashed last year. Hi there as oh, well. He gets oh. wadded up. How did he ride that? Oh, How God. did he hold on to that? 
That was impressive. That was impressive. I thought he was in real trouble then. Especially as he doesn't frequent the gym that much. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> but he spends an awful lot of time riding his bike, actually. And at those yeah, moments, those unbelievable skills really come into play. probably been in that shape before a lot. <laughs> That was unbelievable. Two and a half back then for Fairclough at the second split. That was well held by Brendan. But it really was, yeah. You know, a couple of mistakes, like you said, it does get in your head and flusters you. So I wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, Brendan make a couple more mistakes. Not like I want him to, definitely no. not. But with a track this difficult in yeah. these conditions and these riders pushing like this, then yeah, we're going to see. I don't think we're going to see a perfect run this afternoon. But I feel like when Brendan's riding, I feel so safe. You know, I feel safe. But he's so in control. Most, you know, all, even when he gets out of shape, he knows what he's doing. He knows exactly where his bike is on, in relation yeah. to his body. It's so sick. He just sort of stands on it. Yeah. Is the way I, you know what I mean? He yeah. just, like, he stands on it. The bike does the work. He is at one with his bike, you know. It, yeah. He really is. That's right. And that is because he spends, yeah. you know, his whole probably life more. On it. That's right. He doesn't, he doesn't. I don't think he goes to the gym say, as much as Louis Brody, do you know what I mean? But as a result of that, he has got the skills to pay the bills. And he really still does have like a burning passion for racing, Brendan. Yeah. You know, he's been racing for a long time and he still has that desire to, to get those results to prove that he can, he's not just a stylish kind of dude. No, that's that was, absolutely. That's sick off that section. They're like, nose diving into that turn it, yeah what That's these cool. what these riders are doing absolutely unbelievable just two seconds back then from Vestavik Vestavik has laid down a yeah. really score an amazing run from the Norwegian uh, taking out some really big uh, World Cup races uh, right down the race of names so Fairclough gets to the bottom after a big moment and he goes into third just one and a half seconds back well, great run from Brendan. Yeah, that was good. Some, some pretty wild moments up there. Really wild moments. He came over the top there, actually, and got sideways. It probably went over the top with a bit more speed than he got. Yeah, liked. I think so. And I think they're struggling to slow down, you know, those real muddy bits. They're struggling to, to get the tyres to bite in. And there's so much on the track. That, that was, was unreal, huh? That was, yeah, save of the day. Save of the year, I think. Yeah. Really nice riding from Brendan. Big save. Okay. Four riders still to come. Only four riders left now here at Red Bull Hardline. But it's Braga Vestavik that leads. I mean, we saw him last year put down a great run, but he's he's done it again. That's a, look at the names he's beaten. Fayol, World Cup winner second. Brendan, just off a podium this year. Greenland, World Cup that winner. That was a wild run. Yeah, it really was, was. And there are the standings at the moment then. And shows just what you can do when you're kind of, when you're willing to push in these conditions. And only, you know, six, seven seconds separating those top five riders. It's pretty tight at the top. I do get the feeling that leaderboard might be about to change though as we go now to the top. And we've got Joe Smith in the start. Charlie Hatton, G. Atherton, Bernard Kerr. The three riders to come after this man, though. But let's see what Joe Smith can do. From about an hour away in Kerzus, he's going to be used yeah. to these conditions. Yeah, he's really, really good in the mud, Joe. Really good in the wet, you know, conditions. He's um, he's riding. He, he does really well at the British Nationals. He's, he's he kind of a... G, he yeah. beats all of them, all of them. So I'm wondering if it's nationals. those nerves that are coming to play when you're at a World Cup, you know, yeah. it's, it's hard to lay down a race run under pressure. And um, This race is no different to a World Cup, really. The pressure's on and uh, it's, it's scary out there. Well, that's right. It's definitely scary out there. So Joe Smith dropping in. Rides that first drop, Such that half a second in it, if you're prepared to send it. Such a gnarly start, isn't it? R ridiculous. And Joe actually first at split one yesterday. Well, that's right. He was the it fastest right, yeah. at the very top, yeah. Yeah. So can he do that again today? Would set him up nicely for the rest of his run. Fast over the top of there. Didn't Looking he? good. Yeah, squashed off the top of that big green rock there. Rider! Rider. Thanks, mate. 33 is yeah, the time, and he's up to 1.8. Wow. Yeah. Nearly two seconds at the top for Joe Smith. So this is massive. So Joe absolutely loving those treacherous, wet, damp ruts up there. That's what he's used to riding. That's what he enjoys. Three times top five here at Red Bull Hardline for this man. 
the best. The second place finish oh, back in there. 2015. Makes light work of that drop. High across here and holds it. Clean, absolutely perfect through there. Really nice. Fourth in 2014, fourth last year. Doesn't get up on the rocks there much. Didn't need to. He's had a recent shoulder injury in the last year or so, so he's had surgery and he's come back and he's he's probably feeling good, you know, better than he's felt for a, for a while. It certainly looks like it through that midsection. 2.7 up now for him then. So Paul's nearly a second out of Vestavik. Incredible, oh, that. That was perfect. Perfect landing on that jump. Carried speed. Didn't have too much sort of force through his body on landing, which will help him further down the track. Feet Same. up all the way so far. It's been absolutely faultless. Perfect. And he's riding aggressively. Looks really good. <laughs> Another man who loves this event. Carrying good speed on this flat section. And yeah, working through there as well. And wow. out of there. And looking stylish whilst doing it. Well, if you want to win this thing, you're going to have to race every centimetre of this track. And Joe Smith is doing that at the moment. So if he can get cleanly through these rocks. <laughs> wow. Didn't bother coming over to the riders right there, but it was. It looked far. That was amazing. Much more direct, a yeah. lot less messing about. No problem across the uh, 60 foot, 20 meter road gap. Wow. I'm pretty, uh, it looks quite dry between those rocks there as well. So. And do you reckon it is dry? Oh, oh, oh that? no, that puncher. A yeah, a rear puncher? flat. Oh, no. He's gonna come have on, a rear Joe. Flat. Keep you it saw, going. We saw the ceiling come out of that back wheel. He'll be feeling it now. But maybe it's still hard. And he's up. up by four and a half seconds. Oh, heartbreaking he's for Joe going. Smith. Is he going to do it? Is he going to launch it? Come on, Joe. Oh, he's still going to go for it. He yeah. knows it's been a good run, but he won't be able to send that finish line double, surely. Paddle, paddle, paddle. No, 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 don't do it. He's oh. not doing it. Well, sensibly goes around that finish line jump. He could still go into the lead, though. And he does, he does. by 1.9 seconds. Oh, and my And he's days. absolutely livid with that. Well, oh, you know, wow. you can't hold it against him going around that jump with that flat rear tyre. We'll have to uh, find out what the uh, jury says on that one. That was a huge run from Joan. Absolutely oh. smoked it down the track. Four and a half seconds up at the last split. And then just a tiny pinch on the rock. You saw the ceiling blow out, and he had that puncher, and he still sent all the important the important jumps that got him to their finish. He didn't. He lost about three seconds going around that final jump, so he still yeah. got into the lead. And, and how yeah, let's be honest, it wasn't an advantage. They're making a decision at the moment on the, the validity of that run, but he didn't gain time, did no he? No, we, we say let him have it. Yeah, let him have it. <laughs> yeah, let him have it. Here's the puncher coming up. Bang. Look at that. You can Weird. see the uh, ceiling pop out. So he's probably held a little bit of pressure, maybe 10, 12 PSI. Maybe, or maybe not. That was a big puff, wasn't it, of that sealant coming out? Well, anyway, wow. we'll, we'll go back to Joe Smith and his finished position. Now it's Joe Hatton. Charlie. Sorry, jo Charlie Hatton. Excuse me, Joe on the brain. Charlie Hatton on course. Teammate. Oh, Charlie. Absolutely committed into that first turn. He's got unbelievable corner speed, this man. So he's, he's... Sets up high. And hopefully he can wipe that out of his mind. He's flustered, you can tell it, you know, he's... He's going for a podium. He's absolutely smashed qualifying yesterday. He's really aggressive yesterday in qualifying. And, and again, another rider that's good in these damp, in wet conditions. He's so. such an impressive rider, this rider. man, yeah. See what the split says. And forget, don't forget, he was seventh at split rider one yesterday. Joe had a super yeah, good split. Just 0.6 back. But he came forward all the way down around. from that seventh first split to finish third at the bottom. Oh, yeah. So, this, and he was super quick in this part of the track. It's where he pulled so much time back, even on G, I think. Yeah, so he pulled loads of time back. It was re it's a really long section, loads of, loads of obstacles oh. on it. That was a good line. And it didn't even stress him out. Started to go down low towards that stone wall. But Charlie's quite a quite a calm rider, you know. He, he kind of just trucks on. He, he's a calm dude and he's a calm rider, and that's what you need to, to race well. Absolutely, yeah. Don't think Lou's... Oh, 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 and he's down oh, just like that. Sugar. So Hatton oh, bites the no. dust. Oh, Charlie, come on. Keep it going. Just before that narrow, there's two really narrow rocks there, and obviously, yeah. I, it looked like he knew he wasn't going to get through there. And that's the gap that Bernard was doing yesterday, yeah. where he was pulling time. Yeah. Um, and some of these other riders have been trying to do it today. So maybe he was just slightly offline, oh, you know, didn't 100% know where he was going. But he's on for a good run, Charlie, so... 
That's a shame. But you know, we've seen, what have we seen so far? We've seen pretty. Uh, we've seen a lot going on. So I wouldn't be surprised if Charlie can still still get a good result in that crash. No, that's right. I mean, you know, we've had a puncher. We've had a few crashes. And still be inside the top eight. Seven seconds back. Actually, the time's pretty tight here this afternoon. Just. Well, Joe Smith at the moment in the lead there. We're still waiting for confirmation on whether his uh, run will be allowed or not as he missed that finish line jump purely because he had no air in his rear tyre. 1.9 back to Braga Vestovic. Fayel, 2.6 back. Charlie cleaned through those rocks there. That was really nice. So if he hadn't had that crash, you know, he would have been on for a, for a good time. Wow. It's so hard, right? Is there, yeah. Is there many sports harder than downhill? You know, you. I think Fly it is, it's all over the world for one run. Oh, yeah. It very often doesn't work out. How does that affect you? It's really, it's such an impressive sport. You know, you've got the physical side, you've got the mental side, the equipment. Well, I've been told Joe Smith's time will stand, which I think is uh, oh, very nice. fair. I don't think yeah. any of the riders are going to That's good. Going to argue with that. And, the, and so Charlie, you know, seven seconds back, still on pretty much the same time, riding this low section of track, equally at the same speed as as the other guys. Just a small slip up out in the open for Charlie Han then. Big cheer as he crosses the line. Han then oh. goes into fifth. Less than five seconds back despite a fall. So he's made some time on that bottom section. Oh, I'd be really gutted with that, Charlie. Yeah. The third last year, you know, and third in qualifying, so he knows he's on pace and he knows he's only got to wait another year for, for another <laughs> go at it. <laughs> That's right, yeah. That's true enough. Yeah, but that's, that's the nature of the sport, isn't it? And it's so rewarding, as you know, much better than <laughs> most people when it when it all works out. And you it take is, a win. It is. Just, just didn't really know what happened there. Just got a bit. But he did stop. Pretty, he stopped pretty pretty sharpish on his head. But he did. That Atherton bike there working really well. Looks good. It looks <laughs> yeah. good. Well, there you go. Just two riders left now at the top of the mountain. Nice for you. Next up, it is G. Atherton. Brilliant. The main thing that differentiates Red Bull Hardline to other World Cup events is just the sheer volume of obstacles on the course. You know, you set off and you're straight into big hits, and as soon as you hit that first obstacle, there's no let up all the way down. This year is a very high caliber of rider coming. You know, it's one of the best fields we've seen in, in the past few years. I think to win Hardline, you have to be a very all round rider. You have to be able to adapt to different weather conditions and you have to be able to ride those technical bits of the track between the big obstacles. Last year when I won uh, and crossed the line, you know, I didn't, I didn't necessarily know I'd won straight away. But until you see the time, you're not really sure, but at the same time, I heard the crowd's reaction, and as I was crossing that kind of finish straight, you know, I could feel the energy in the crowd. No one's ever won this event twice, so everything I can do to, to try and win again, I'll be doing. The win last year by six seconds. Can G. Atherton become the first that, repeat Peggy. winner of Red Bull Hardline? Course, no one yeah, ever has won this race twice. Rach, how are you feeling? Are you as nervous as G right now, I imagine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe more so. I hate watching him race, I really do. Get involved on social media, hashtag Red Bull Hardline. As we wait for oh. G. Atherton, preparing himself at the top to drop in for his last all-out race run of 2019. Red Bull rap page uh, will a, follow. Getting a little taste of the, how slidey the wood could be. So interesting <laughs> to see the riders not warming up. You know, they're not having turbo trainers at the top like a World Cup. They're just straight in. Atherton nearly ready to drop in. <laughs> Here we go then, last year's winner is on track. Two times a world champion, this man. A World Cup overall winner. Hit that first turn hard. I think that turn's getting harder with the, the dirt's dragging off it to reveal the rock underneath. Straight to the berm on the outside. Wow. Simpler, maybe faster line in these conditions. And letting the bike work underneath him, you know, really letting the bike do the work. And his body's just letting it do it. And that's what's so cool to see, you know, when it's a hard Rider. track. They're working hard for it. Joe Smith Rider split goes by, though. Go on, Just Jay. over a Get second go. back for Atherton. <laughs> Not a lot of time on this track, Rach. Right. Joe had a super good top section. Yeah. Um, yeah, go on, G. <laughs> this is, yeah. Well, this is the part of the course where he can really make some time online. Well, Clean through there. Clean round that turn. 
Oh, and a stab oh, on the oh. outside and holds it away from the wall. Massey G. You can tell him off afterwards, Rach. Yeah. He's definitely pushing, though. Yeah, and I mean, it's such a fine line. They, they don't, they've had maybe two runs in these conditions today, yeah, this yeah. morning, and all of them saying they were super nervous. And Hux over there as well, picks up over that stump off that uh, drop coming in there. Oh, Only really, uh, Bernard did that yesterday, 1.4 back then. So, losing a little bit of time. Just 0.3 oh, of a second yeah. to Joe Smith. Hard on the pedals, coming down towards the wall, falls edge. Clean, fast. This is horrible. <laughs> he needs to find over a second, though. It was a massive run from Atherton here a year ago. Conditions a lot, lot worse. Oh, good through there. Carrying great speed here, Rach. Yeah, I, I like hearing the tyres in the dirt. It's a cool sound. And where's he going to go on this bit where he got in a muddle last year? Well, he takes on the really difficult line over to the rider's right and makes it work. Gives him a great line into the left. Yeah, clean and great speed. There. That was perfect. That was good. But Joe, Joe was on a flyover run. He might have pulled some time back there, though. High, right on the edge of that burn, really high up into the, the danger zone. You've got to stay low in them turns. G looking good through these. And this is where you see the, the, the World Cup racers coming to their own. Really pinpoint precision, you know. He, he knows exactly where he wants his wheels to go in those rocks. And if they're not exactly where you want them, you're going to end up in trouble today. And it's red, but it's less. 0.7 back down to the last split for Atherton. Joe had that puncher here, so G kind of That's right. working to G's advantage, hopefully. So he should go fast. It's then 1.9 seconds back to Braga Vestavik. So Atherton is going to go fast as here he comes down the line. And it is 255.3 for G Atherton. Two and a half seconds up. Last year's winner leads now with only Bernard Kerr left at the top of this mountain. Oh, it's wild. It's horrible to watch. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure's on. I think G was feeling the pressure there. You know, I feel like he was a bit messy, a bit sloppy. And, you know, I think he's winning last year, knowing he could win today if he, if he had the perfect run. And it wasn't perfect. No, we know, it we wasn't. don't think this was perfect, though, this part of the track. But we're not going to see, I don't think, you know, you're not going to see a perfect no, run pushing today on this track. So much has happened already, isn't it, to the riders, you know. Bernard has to really lay down a, a, an absolutely perfect run. And like you say, it's, it's, the conditions are too unpredictable up there. And what a time that was by Joe Smith. You've got to feel for him with that puncher at yeah, the end. Yeah, really He'd have been really Joe. close to G. Well, one man left at the top, and it's Bernard Kerr. Red Bull Hardline for me is basically the best downhill race we have all year. It's got the biggest jumps, a sick track, it's in the UK, and yeah, it's just the best, biggest downhill race we have in the world. My season started off really well. It was going in an upward trend. I was starting to do good. I crashed at one World Cup and got a 17th, so I knew my speed was there. And then unfortunately, training at home, I broke my hand six and a half weeks ago now. So that was quite a big setback, but last two races, I'm starting to come back to form. I feel fit, so yeah, I'm feeling pretty good and pretty confident coming into this one. Last year, finishing second, I actually wasn't that annoyed because it was cool to see G finally win, but I was definitely really slow at the bottom. I rode there way too safe and a bit nervous, so I need to be way quicker at the bottom, I think, mainly just after that last row gap, and then above it, the rocks was hard for everyone, but if I can get the rocks cleaned up there and then this whole bottom section, I think I've got a chance of winning again. Can this man deny G Atherton back-to-back -back wins here at Red Bull Hardline then? The winner here in 2016, in fact, he's never been outside the top three since 2015, an incredible track record. This is the one that counts today, though. Oh, he hit that first turn so hard. They're all getting wild up there. They that, really are. That's what it needs, I think. Bent a pedal right at the top of the track yesterday on that drop in qualifying. And Bernard's riding so confidently, you know, he's a confident guy, he's, he's got the chat, and that kind of comes across his riding, you know, he's, he is really confident. Yeah, he's a fun guy to be around, Bernard Kerr. You can see he's attacking. Right when he's on his bike, though, he lets that do the talking. So, G's right time, and he's up by over a second to the first on, split. Long way to go in this race yeah. run, though. But it's green for Kerr at the top. <laughs> second, the last two years here. And this is where it gets. Oh, and he's pushing. A little mistake there, perhaps. Oh, Corrected it, though. Bang, back online fast. now. Was really, really fast. Really fast, yeah. Oh, and again. 
she had that mistake in this section and lost a lot of time there to, to Joe. So Vern is looking good coming into this this section where he made a lot of time yesterday doing that little gap that he was doing. Which is just coming up now. Just picks it up again over there. I mean, it looks like nothing, but it's, it's a, there's so much on the track there, loads of rocks. But until yesterday, wow. until today, Burnham's the only one who's done it. 2.2 up now. So it's looking good for Bernard Carr. He's looking really comfortable, really in control. Coming back from that broken hand. He was coming back from injury, actually, when he won here in 2016. He only got back on a bike for the World Championships then. Comes back with incredible form like nothing has happened. Like most of these guys, and you, Rach, you've been through a few as well yourself. I think the ex after an injury, the excitement of getting back on your bike is too much to resist, and you just go for it. So the next big sting, then, in this track coming up. This is where he could get caught out. And he goes over to the rider's right, right off that peak of that big That's rock good. there, and it was perfect. Really nice through there. And you can see the confidence you're talking about in his riding there. Yeah, he's putting his bike where he wants it to go. We, we, we heard a few of his bre deep breaths there in those corners, I think. So he's really kind of, kind of trying to keep himself grounded, trying to keep himself in control. You've got to keep your head in the game at this point. That was good. Really smooth from Bernard. Stop, Bernard! Stop! Perfect off there, stops that landing. Oh, is he carrying as much speed across this camber? Yes, 2.8 up, nearly three seconds then. Just this big, long finish line straight to come then for Bernard Kerr. Not much can go wrong now, you could say. <laughs> You're a great person saying that for you, right, Bernard Kerr. One jump away from winning hard line for the second time. <laughs> Bernard Kerr is double hard. The first person ever to win Red Bull hard line twice. <laughs> Bernard Kerr takes Red Bull hard line 2019. Catch you for Bernard. 2.50. <laughs> 2.52 the time in the end. It's a winning margin of over three seconds. Good His mum's run. there to congratulate him. That was sick. Perfect, that run. Really clean, really precise. Knew exactly what he, what he wanted to do, and he did it. The first man to master this track twice. Oh, hard out of the gate. Look oh. at him in there. nearly dragging the bars that on that it first on turn. That first turn. <laughs> I mean, you know, you can see these guys are up for it, and they've got to be right out of the gate. Yeah, he said he knew he could win, he just needed to do it. And that's the confidence that you need. <sighs> Look at that as well. It's, it's incredible bouncing. how these, uh, uh, you know, when you watch these top World Cup races now, it is unbelievable. The reactions, the way they let the bike move beneath them. Yeah, really comfortable letting the bike just bang, 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 really loose and com comfortable letting it work. A Hello. massive run from Bernard Kerr here. In Snowdonia. That's what he came here to do. What do you want us here? Cool. So Sorry, Bernard. Bernard. Okay. Bernard there. You're the Bernard, Bernard, Bernard's taking the win. Rick, let's Rick. hear from him now, Rick. Oh. I don't know if Rick can hear me at the moment. Bernard, you're the first person to win two Red Bull <laughs> hard lines. How big a result is this for you? Uh, dude, unreal. My mum surprised me and came today. So, such a big win for me. I'm so happy to have done it. I definitely almost threw it away a couple of times up there. So, just unreal. I've battled with a bit of an injury this year. And to come back and do this means the world. It's rad. Talk us through what's going through your mind there at the top because, I mean, the weather this morning was miserable. Yeah. How big a curveball did it throw you? Um, quite a bit, but by race run, dude, like, yeah, it's slick and I changed one of my lines up, but um, you just had to ride smart. So, push where you knew you could and ride smart other bits, but you had to leave it all out there. The boys are flying. We heard Braga did a crazy good time and then Joe Smith. So, yeah, it had to push pretty hard. You mentioned that hand injury earlier on the season as well. This must be redemption for you after yeah, that. Unreal, yeah, like stoked about that. It's hurting right now. Take a week off next week and then, yeah, start riding again. Well, this is it. I mean, it's maybe not the end of the season you would have wanted in terms of World Cup racing, but the yeah. win here, what is it about this place that brings out the best in you? Dude, best downhill track in the world. Biggest jumps, hardest tech, and uh, it's in the UK. We've got a rag crowd, everyone's here, so, yeah, just love it. Gordon, we'll let you go and get ready for the podium. Thank you very much. Well done this week. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Oh. So the best downhill track in the world? Yeah. Hard nice. to argue with that.
when you've just seen that. So Bernard Kerr takes the winner at Red Bull Hardline 2019. His second win at Red Bull Hardline, the first man to do it twice, 2.52 the time. Three seconds up on G. Atherton. Joe Smith took a third place. You've got to feel yeah, for Joe, haven't we? Yeah, feel sorry for Joe. That that punch in the bottom half of the track, you know, he probably would have probably would have slotted just a second there ahead it of G. May may well have done. And Braga Festivik, his best ever finish at Red Bull Hardline, the Norwegian. Yeah, he'll be buzzing with that. He'll be really pleased with that. What a run that was. Really good run. Further down the order, Chaos Seagrave, Cade Edwards, Harry Malloy, Flo Paye on the last page there. But, uh, of course, Chaos taking the long way down in the end. Chaos getting uh, probably best trick, I think. Best trick, that's yeah. right, if there was a prize for that. But, yeah, what a great afternoon's race and that has been today. Pretty exciting. And thankfully the weather held off for us. I think, Rach, Rach, do you think that G's going to be happy with that second place finish today? Yeah, I think he'll be happy enough. You know, there's always a good battle between him and Bernard um, at the hard line. And uh, I yeah. think he, he, he would have wanted to go for the win. But, you know, with the conditions up there, none of the riders were really sure how much to push. And, you know, Bernard laid down a, down a super good run. And I think he'll be I think he'll be happy with that. Yeah, and, and you're right. I mean, how difficult is it for those riders at the top today? Because it's been perfect. Yesterday yeah. was glorious yeah. sunshine. And today the track, it was, it was definitely slick. I mean, to see those... Those last few guys really make that much mm. sense of it was, was impressive, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, and impressive. And we didn't see them attack as hard as they were yesterday in the dry. And that's that experience showing, you know, they really knew just how much they needed to do to go fast. Um, you've seen, like, Bragi was pushing, it looked like he was pushing more out of his comfort zone than, yeah. the, than Bernard and G, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of, that's what the, we've seen a lot of mistakes, you know, lots yeah. of little slides and people making big mistakes in their runs and still getting good times. As action packed as we, yeah. uh, as ever. And we, you know, that's what Hardline delivered again, didn't it? It was yeah. incredible. Right start to finish. Yeah, loved every second of it. Joe Smith, of course, he's going to go away from here with a little bit of a, it was just bad luck really to yeah. see that. Yeah, just bad luck really. But he kept it rolling and he hit the, the jumps that were important. So He did, absolutely did, yeah. Well, amazing day here at Red Bull Hardline again. So, well, what an amazing hardline we've had for 2019. Bernard Kerr taking the win then, just ahead of G. Atherton and Joe Smith, top three. But, you know, it's, yeah, it's delivered once again, isn't it, Rachel? Yeah, Fiol in, uh, in fifth there, you know, yeah. he, he's uh, had an amazing weekend. You know, he's a super impressive rider and how many flips we see three do we see three flips in the races in the race runs? <laughs> Absolutely Pretty did, impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't see Brendan well here's the winning run then, the end of his uh, Bernard Kerr's winning run here. Clean down through so there. Precise, really, really precise with his wheels. Broke on uh, rocks that are as slippery as a wet bar of soap. But the track looking like it is, it was drying up for the for the last riders, you know. Yeah. The, every rider will clear it a little bit, and uh, that's right. Yeah, it doesn't just dry up naturally. That's right. They scrape a bit of the dirt away and yeah, wipe it away a little bit. Yeah. Stuck to their bum. The dirt. Big hits all the way down this track. It is a special breed of rider for this place, isn't it? Yeah. Fast, confident, but loose. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you've got to be extremely comfortable with your wheels off the ground if you want to win this one like this man is. The riders pedaling all the way up the lips on these big jumps. The scale of the features here is really... I mean, look at that finish line it's jump. It's huge, yeah. yeah. It absolutely blows your mind every single it's year. It's like jumping a house. Yeah, you forget how big it is. You could, yeah, you could get the entire crowd in the middle of it. Absolutely, yeah. So, he's buzzing, isn't he? Yeah, his mum's here as well to see him <laughs> take the win. She follows him around a little bit, but yeah. No, I enjoyed that a lot today. It's been uh, it's been one of the best. I think it's probably been one of the best hard lines. We've had, you know, you have to go back to 2016 when it was really, uh, as the riders getting onto the podium, but 2016, you know, 17, yeah. 18, really wet ones. So it was third good today. place for Joe Smith today. And he absolutely had a smoker of a run, Joe. He really did, that flat tyre. G. Atherton takes second place. Wow, look at the trophies, they're pretty cool. Are they dragons? Adam and Isa are in the pen camp for the and the Nasmo the Hill Cheer. Make some noise and the winner of the 2019 Red Bull Hardline, Bernard Kerr! Red Bull Hardline winner for 2019, though, is Bernard Kerr.
the first man to stand on the top step of the box here twice. With an awesome trophy, Welsh Dragon, I think it is. That there. is amazing, look at that. Oh, forget your helmet. <laughs> Three very happy men. And now the champagne celebration. Give it all together, a big cheer. Joel Smith, G. Atherton and Bernard Kerr. Here comes the champagne, this is always dangerous. <laughs> No one's got goggles on to protect their eyes. <laughs> it really stings when it goes it's in your eyes. It's bad, eye. eh? Yeah. That's got to feel good after this week. <laughs> the what... end of a long week, the end of a long year. Yeah, the end of a long season for these guys. Now we're gonna Joe's got it, an eye. <laughs> an eye of champagne. I was going to say, that's what Joe's tire looked like on the <laughs> rock section where it blew up. Well, it's been absolutely enjoying it, Rach. Yeah, it's been amazing. Yeah, really good. Seeing it from this perspective has been so sick. Well, you've been absolutely incredible. It's been fantastic having you here with us. And, Thanks and for you know, me. yeah, sh sharing your knowledge with us. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. So there you have it for 2019. Your champion is Bernard Kerr with a winning time of 2.52. Once again, the course here in the stunning Dovey Valley has tested the riders to their absolute limits. And as the dust settles on this sixth edition, I think we can all agree that Red Bull Hardliners once again lived up to expectations. We're now off to celebrate with this year's winner. But from all of us here, thank you for watching and we'll see you back in 2020. Goodbye.